I want to establish. So Dan is here. Gojo is here. Katie is here. Because people have been asking me, did you have a watch party for your episode of Celebrity Family Feud? And I said, absolutely not. Mm -mm. I watched it by myself in my living room on the floor and uh, was overwhelmed with everything that happened that I did not remember. <laughs> and I said, the real watch party is happening in studio on a little show that is named after me in which I will be the most narcissistic Dan Lebetard that a narcissist has ever been. Not surprising at all that you would dedicate an entire episode to this. You told us, don't bring any prep, just bring yourselves <laughs> and we will just sit around <laughs> talking about me the entire time. It was so scary. Can I just say that up front? Like, so... Gojo is here not just because we love Gojo. Gojo is here because Gojo was there. Gojo was in the audience. It's a big building. Mm. It's the biggest building I've ever been in, it felt like. Huh. And there's an, it, crowds of people. I am the man in the arena, as, as Tom Brady likes to say, as, as, as that quote goes. And it's horrifying. And in the crowd, like an emotional support audience member, <laughs> Dancing to the music piped into that arena is Mike Golick Jr. Just, just being himself, and it helped me so much. Good teammate. I had to do something to at least offer any bit of value there because this was the hardest coattail riding I had done in quite some time, just drafting off Mina and Pablo's popularity and how cool they are to get myself in the door of my favorite game show all of my young adult life into my adult life to see Steve Harvey in person. Ugh. Pablo and Mina made that possible. Ugh. So the least I could do was bring golden retriever energy to the audience. I would have killed to see a Steve Harvey family feud in person. I'm the most jealous. I've watched so many hours of this man perfectly hosting this game show. Nothing has felt more like climbing into a television than encountering Steve Harvey in person. He is a surreal entity. What do he smell like? What do he smell like? Cologne? Cologne? Good question. He smelled like money. That's dirty smelling. That smells disgusting. Money he, smells he gross. He smelled like money sprayed with cologne. Ah, okay. It looked like a level from like a Batman video game. It did. It was just like enormous gray, bleak, but in the middle of it were these gleaming lights in this soundstage in Culver City. And inside of that soundstage, the show began. It's time for Celebrity Family Feud! From Freeform's so awkward at this part. I'm obsessed with how awkward you are. <laughs> Not the coolest I've ever looked. No. The way you just look at other people. They're taking on Chrissy's co-star, Chef David Chang and <laughs> Looking at Mina, looking around. <laughs> <laughs> then trying to look cool. So, I mean, Why didn't they put you more, in order? Oh, because David had to be in the middle? More starched than dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Having to do that opposite John Legend, who I is know. so effortlessly cool. And Steve Harvey, who's sweet? so effortlessly yeah, yeah. I mean, cool. Steve Harvey walks out there in a suit that I've never seen before. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> no one's ever worn that. This before. color combination that's Wild. all one gleaming, shimmering color right. that smells like it's again like pheromones. Sateen, I Sateen. think is what it's called. I have no idea. Yes. Fancy. Yes. Very fancy. You looked incredibly he uncomfortable. Dresses like a Bond villain. Uh, he does. And he he immediately was like pointing to the real celebrities like John Legend. It's like that's his guy. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, my dog, <laughs> the legend, John Legend. Hey. Grammy Award winner and Oscar Emmy Golden Globe and Tony Award winner. Hey. Wow. And is currently on The Voice. How you been, man? Very good. I'm looking to add Family Feud winner to my trophy list. You know what? Yeah, immediately, by the way, they did start to, like, talk some shit. Oh. We're a bit of a goof troop, but we're excited and, and we're ready. Okay, well, let's do it. got some Harvard grads over there. <laughs> is that talking shit? I mean, you graduated wow. from Harvard. <laughs> That's right. I mean, wait, wait, you do not know what it is like to be buried in talk. Shit if you think that is talking. Shit. Well, this is what became very obvious to us immediately. So David Chang um, had assembled, he casted 
this team mm-hmm. of people who went to like fancy schools. Yeah. So the team, I mean, look, I, I, I'll say this just for the record here. I wanted like Gronk. I felt like we needed one token <laughs> white guy. I would have pulled Gojo out of the stands, frankly. Um, but instead, what he did, what Chang did was assemble a team of like, of nerds to play Family Feud. Let's go meet the Chang team. I can't even call you family because you're not. Chang, everybody. He's an award-winning chef. Uh, you see him on Chrissy and Dave dying out and dinner time live with David Chang, a New York Times best-selling author for his cookbooks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle, are those audio pickups, or is he saying your stuff to your face? Thanks. LPGA Tour wins by my big fan of yours. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mina Kimes. <laughs> Analyst on NFL Live, journalist at ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, Pablo Torre. Award-winning sports writer, like podcaster, and ESPN host. Let's nice meet so you, Pablo. Serious. Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, Chris Yeen, podcaster and co-host of Dinner Time Live. How you doing, man? I'm excellent. The handshake was a big moment. Mm-hmm. Vigorous. What was what prompted that? Why did he I, want that? I don't you? know. No one else got their handshake displayed like that on our team. Oh, did you pull his hand over to you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I sort of wanted him to 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 do. Uh, <laughs> it was like yeah. a, that's the most alpha male boot camp endorsed handshake. <laughs> I've seen a presidential so debate before. I need to send an electric sort of worm <laughs> jolt into the guy I'm I'm shaking hands with. Any particular reason I didn't hear Meadowlark said by Steve Harvey (laughs) instead of all the other things that were said about Pablo Torre? You will discover in the doing of this episode that in no way at any point was I in control. I was not, I was, uh, Steve, Steve had an agenda, Dan, um, that did not involve uh, (laughs) celebrating the independent uh, truth-seeking media company that you and I, of course, are so proud. So, so very proud to represent at all times. And I still don't have a a key card for it. I still have to knock on the door. Katie does sort of like paw like a, like a cat. I need a fob. Yeah. You guys had an agenda going into the naming. You guys were almost not Team Chang oh on this, God. and we're making the ABC production staff very uncomfortable what? with your guys' attempt at name changing. Thank you for reminding me. So, an example, the prime example of how we are not in control is that David Chang did not want to be the the patriarch of this team. He didn't want to be Team Chang. Um, and so he was asking, like, what should we be instead? And I was like, oh, we can choose. We should be Team Asia. So many, many people were like, uh, you know, I, I, this is confusing for lots of reasons because we are not related, for the record. We are not family. We I was going to say, you're not doing yourself any favors we, with the, you and Mina aren't related, are related rumors. So in this case, we were like, we want to be Team Asia. And so we were telling this to the people uh, out outside of the set before the thing started. And the producer, Gojo was there looking it at was- the, the, the white man's face, his response to being uh, provided the counter- possibility of Team Asia was that of abject horror. I truly wish you guys could have seen the old white producers sweating when they kept going back and be like, no, we want to be Team Asia. (laughs) And would have looked like Family Feud had named this team of Asian people Team Asia. It also doesn't say team, right? I think it just says Chang. Oh, it would have just said Asia. It would have just said Asia, which I think would not be good. (laughs) They went back and like talked to the bigger boss like (laughs) three times and kept coming back out there like, he called Can we really it, not do this? He called his own manager <laughs> and was like, I need to call the manager. Can you guys get corporate? I'm uh, incredibly white. I'm in out of, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in deep I'm in deep water here. <laughs> Can I tell them they can't be Asian? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they can't be this is where we learned that ABC <laughs> desperately needs more diversity. Yeah, in their I was going to say they didn't have an Asian hiring. to call. Get your woke out of my family feud. <laughs> Just get it out of here, okay? Get to the fun, please. So, speaking of the fun, uh, Katie and I had dinner that week in LA. You were there randomly. Mm-hmm. And Katie provided me a strategy that Which I, I didn't. Have. I brought it to the team. I brought the strategy to the team. Could you explain the strategy? Okay, so I, like I said, I watch a lot of Family Feud. And Pablo, I think when we had that dinner was like, I don't watch it. Almost borderline never seen it in the sense that like everybody's seen it. 
but you have not watched it recently. I've never, I've never broken down the all 20. Sure. And so I was kind of telling him like, okay, you know, say good answer after every answer. That's kind of a common, you got to want to, even if it's the worst answer you've ever heard, you got to hit him with a good answer. Be very encouraging Check. and a good teammate, which I did notice you did a bunch. I'm very proud of you. But I also, then I went into something that later on my Uber ride back to my hotel, I was like, I don't think I should have told Pablo that. <laughs> I think that was too inside feud. It was too next level. From the which subreddit. Was, and when I told them that there was, um, you know, they give you, once you get the answer, they're like, do you want to pass or do you want to play? Do you kick or receive? Yes. And I said, um, almost everybody says play because you're there to play the game. But technically, sometimes it's not a bad strategy to pass right. because if there's a ton of answers on the board. Seven or more. Right? Is that what it was? Did get, I say that specifically? Yes, you get to see on the board how many cards are there to be turned over. And if there are seven or more statistically, to get all of those right is so unlikely. And that's the only way you can get the points if you if you choose to play. Exactly. And so what if you were to just if tank? You wait. What if you were to tank the buzzer? And you let them get three wrong, then it comes back to you. You only have to get one answer. And correct. you can have uh, collaborated on what that one oh answer is. Oh my God, so woke over here, analytics <laughs> over there. Can we just play the f few? Finish him. Hey, take it easy, take it easy. Top seven answers on the board. Name something a man might say is actually an upside to being in jail. Terrible, cat. terrible Damn. question. The sex. What? <laughs> <laughs> when you hit the buzzer, you're supposed to say something. Well, I'm like, something. how inappropriate can we be? <laughs> right? Okay, That's Michelle. how you know she hasn't watched no much before. <laughs> no yeah, rent. Exactly. Make whoopee. No Nick to grandma. No <laughs> John. On the board. Uh, alone time. Alone time. I, I, I hated that this was the number one answer. <laughs> Immediately, we're they got like, the woke out of there pretty quick yeah. for you, Dan. <laughs> how can that not be? How can that be no spouse? How can that be? I know. How right? can what? that only be wife? They're not letting the woke wound your feud, Dan. <laughs> That's right. The carceral state. <laughs> number one thing about it: no wife. Um, <laughs> Everybody's number one review. <laughs> you, you could tell, by the way, that like our plan immediately, like hypothetically made sense. It's like mm. seven answers on the board, all of that stuff. Um, but we just, a recurring theme is that we are very slow on the buzzer. The good news though, the silver lining was that the plan, the logic of the plan is borne out. It begins to work because the category is super hard. Mm. Yeah, Seven answers, and just to speed through it, so number one, no wife slash family. Ridiculous. Number two, meals a day. Three you get meals food. a day. Food, yep. yep. Number three is no rent slash bills, saw that. Number six is no job. Number seven is meet new friends. Mm. And so- Really? The four and five answers are left blank, and so we have a chance now to steal the category. Uh, Steve, we're gonna go with uh, street cred. Good answer. Good answer. Too good. The answer was too good. Yeah, so we're down. I will say this is where the Harvard and the like dream team assembly thing is actually not the greatest for this type of game. Yes. This game is average American. You're supposed to think like, what is some dummy that's answering this poll going to say? Not what is the What's a clever smartest, answer. cleverest answer. Yeah, this this became clear with the next category. We got the top seven answers on the board. Name something sexy you'd never want to see your mother wearing. Oh God, I hated this. <laughs> thong. Good. Thong. Whoa. Good answer. Exceptional Good answer. answer. <laughs> but not number one. I mean, I would assume just lingerie, right? A teddy is a wild thing to say. But there it is. There it is. <laughs> also, sick. nighty. Nighty doesn't evoke sexy to me. Nighty is like a. Long That's the most John pity. Legend answer of yeah. all time, though. Like, of course he would say it. <laughs> yeah, an answer that's basically crooned, even if it's said, is Teddy. <laughs> Um, you can see, by the way, uh, if you, again, grind the All-22, you can see Michelle Wee, after she gets the answer right, look back at us being like, are we going to pass? Oh, that's funny. And then, of oh, course, the so choice funny. is taken from our hands because John Legend Thank God. gets it right with Teddy. But again, 
Katie, it's seven answers. Yep. And then of course they don't get all seven because getting all seven is statistically almost impossible, it turns out. We got two strikes. We got to be careful. Chain team can steal. Sheer or see-through clothing? Sheer or see-through clothing? Good answer, Lana. Thank you, thank you. Not a good answer. I mean, maybe they uh, say the one after. No, they got, z- they got zero <laughs> answers right. All right, here we go. One. Name after something Teddy. sexy you'd never want to see your mother wearing. Uh, birthday suit. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Again, too clever. No, that's not a good answer. It's too clever. Bikini, bra, mini skirt, sexy maid costume. What? Stripper heels. <laughs> Cheerleader outfit. <laughs> now we're dressing, sexy we're maid, dressing, but we're not a school girl. <laughs> Specific fetishes. You can see your mom in a school girl. But Halloween not, don't, slut don't be the maid. outfit. The, 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 <laughs> Uh, We're down 141 points to zero. Crazy. (laughs) This is when, I don't know if Katie ever experienced this. I presume not uh, in Celebrity Jeopardy. This is when the stage manager comes by and is like, don't give up. That's really funny. You can come back. It's possible to win the game. You got the Jim Valvano speech during Family Feud (laughs) because you were down 141 to nothing? Don't ever give up? We, we did not believe in miracles. Uh, we were <laughs> contemplating increasingly uh, that this was going to be just a series of viral humiliations. Um, nobody more concerned about this, by the way, Mia. than our dear friend Mia Combs. <laughs> Welcome back, Celebrity Family Feud. The legend team got 141. Kane team not on the board. Give me Gene, give me Mina. Come on. At this point, you feel like you're embarrassing your Asian nope. brethren, right? You feel That's like right. no you're... handshake. Oh, wow. wow! Nothing. Cold. Comeback Nothing. starts here. Comeback <laughs> starts here. Yeah. Point Vase so double. focused. Top seven answers on the board. Again, it's crazy. What kitchen gadget would you compare your love making to? <laughs> A wooden spatula. What? <laughs> right now. What? All right now. <laughs> I don't <laughs> And she goes, I don't cook. Get a splinter in it. <laughs> a I don't cook. A in it. wooden spatula. <laughs> Underrated line of the show. Get a splinter. I'm going to go with <laughs> nothing. <laughs> oven? <laughs> oven. <laughs> hey. Oh, what are they, they going to do? We're going to play. We, Mina, unilaterally was like, we're not getting skunked like this. We're we receiving. Need to play. Yeah. We're playing. Yeah. The right call. The stage manager also. Absolutely by the, way. the right call. Yeah. You didn't come out here the to right lay call. up. Exactly. It, it, if it hadn't been team. if the game I wasn't was... going the way it was going, it would be nuts to pass with zero points on the board. <laughs> <laughs> we finally got it. No thanks. You guys take this one. Wait yeah. a minute. That was, you're, you're, that was you're, your you're, third you're, Sixers season that they tanked in. It was like, guys, <laughs> guys really? Come on. Again? I feel like what Katie just did there is what I spent like seven seasons ago yelling about in football that you have to go for it on fourth and short, and then someone would fail on fourth and short and people would yell at me you idiot yeah, you can't go happen, for it she just made the correct argument <laughs> and in fact taught me something about feud strategy i did not know by saying you gotta pass when there are seven of them but not if you have zero points and you have a chance on behalf of asia to be sent home not getting to ever play the game <laughs> that is tough billions tough scene. i could feel the billions upon billions of people on the planet um pressuring me as this happened. Come on, here we go. Come on, Pablo. Let's go, baby. What kitchen gadget would you compare your love making to? Steve. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm gonna compare it to a blender. A blender. Which is what yeah. I said at home. I Mixing was like, Let's go, Pablo. Putting it on you. <laughs> <laughs> Big. Big. We should have known Big. right after that that Pablo was destined for great things on this show. Big. Did, did putting Steve, it on you. Great answer. Did Steve great Harvey answer. just say that Pablo in the bedroom is putting it on you? Because it's not a way I've ever looked at Pablo before. Or blenders. That is a LinkedIn endorsement now on my profile. Steve, Steve Harvey, Harvey said he's dash, putting it on you. He puts it on you. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was not a concern because luckily our team, our team captain, mm. is the head of a food empire, right? a food media company, and they were going next. Yeah, true. Chris, what kitchen gadget will you compare your love making to? My love making is most similar to a potato masher. Mine. Specific. Yes, good answer. See, Specific. again, two inside baseball. My yes. love making is comparable to a potato masher. <laughs> I do love the way you made fun of it. 
<laughs> David, what kitchen gadget would you compare your love making to? Um, you gotta get this one, dude. Come it's on. Yeah. Equipped like a microwave oven. A quick. microwave oven because it's quick. Like a microwave oven. Oh. On brand. On brand, too. Good answer. D <laughs> plus 30. Microwave. Uh. The idea that Michelle Wee would be suffering this indignity, and I know her to be less competitive on that panel than Mina Kimes, who right now, <laughs> like, lava is spewing from her ears because she's embarrassing herself nationally and internationally. She and, was And she mad. weaponized that to immediately not help David yes. Chang get an answer in a field that he knows very well, <laughs> but to remind him you that better. the eyes of the nation you expect better. him <laughs> to she excel held her gun in his, to his field. Head. She was like, you <laughs> better get this right. You got to get this comma this, dude this is slash yours. mother. Also, the, two, the, the, the tone of it was like, we got to get this. Oh, like, it's you just increasingly better. aggro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she yeah, yeah, was yeah. the audience yelling at him at home yeah. from right next to him that was supposed to be the supportive teammate. And also, just so we can get Mina's actual thoughts on the matter herself, here she is on an episode of The Dave Chang Show that we just taped, explaining what was going through her mind as all of us were getting uh, zero answers correct. When... The questions and the answers started coming in and we saw how dumb they're dumb they're it's dumb not answers. elitist to me to say they're dumb questions with dumb answers i think that's just accurate however because i'm competitive when we started losing <laughs> i pivoted to this game is dumb and i hate it it's for idiots <laughs> so quickly and i feel like we all did my whole thing by the way at this point was like and i i had to sort of who am i channeling what's my motivation right i'm not me who am I trying to be? I'm like, oh, what would Homer Simpson do? Was what? the question. That was like, what would, oh, what oh, would Homer oh, Simpson think. do if he was being polled by the survey? Um, I don't think Michelle Wee necessarily approached it in the same way. Michelle, we got two strikes. The legend team can steal. Air fryer. And air <laughs> fryer. <laughs> we got this, we got this, we got this. It don't really fry. It just make you think it's fried. <laughs> and so, of course, Chrissy Teigen and John Legend, they smell blood. I'm going to go with slow cooker. <laughs> John Legend. <laughs> Literally crooning. Did he unbutton another yes, button during yes, that did. answer? I think he did. <laughs> Crazy. Oh. That's four hours. He the lowest you can cook something somehow. on a slow cooker is four hours. That's I, insane. I'd be tapping way do, out. Do, do you guys know how hard it is for me, uh, forgive the phrasing of that, to uh, be jealous of the bedroom life of two people while I'm watching <laughs> Family Feud based on just how they answered that? <laughs> like, she did not actually care about the actual right. ability of that answer to be right as much as it was to just remind people, yeah. hey, we're we, I'm a model and he's a crooner and we bang quite a bit for quite a long time. There's a Everything change. you guys think, it's yeah. all true. The flavor is being stewed into the meat. Oh, God. Slowly throughout the day. And you thought Pablo put it on you. <laughs> For the record here, the answers were, in order, from one to seven, blender slash mixer, spoon slash ladle, hot oven, cork opener, can opener, Nuts. baster, <laughs> whisk slash beater. Also, the fact that fork isn't on there is crazy. It sounds like nobody said fork. I just so, it was very frustrating. You got very frustrating questions. I like that Katie is the election denier on, on the show. Like, Stop this is, this the is, deal! Is, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Luckily, though, what we stole was 98 points. Nice. We're on the board. We okay. got no answers that actually deserve 98 points, but we got 98 points. And now I have to walk up to the, to the buzzer. Question. Give me Mike. Give me Pablo. Come on, Mike. All right, fellas, nice point answer. values are triple. We oh, got the top four it. answers on the board. A bow into we the asked 100 right. married men, Martial if you arts. woke up a single man tomorrow, what's the first thing you'd buy? 
car. A car. What is stopping you from buying a car when you have a wife? <laughs> <laughs> but Pablo, Pablo, real quick, uh, so far, no one has actually won this game by doing it correctly, correct? The only yes. winners there are here are points given because the other people have <laughs> failed. Yes. So uh, just so we can speed through this part, um, nobody gets anything right on that side. <laughs> and so the opportunity to steal again, this, to Dan's point, this entire game is actually a validation of Katie's strategy, which is try to steal. Try to steal. Um, but before we do, um, something happens that I don't know has ever happened in the history of Celebrity Family Feud or anything. It's pathetic, and it is voiced by Steve Harvey himself. The huddle, because I got some news for you. Here's the deal. This is how bad this game has been going. <laughs> if it's there or not, we're going to play sudden death. Mm. Oh, because he didn't know. Because we don't have enough points to reach 300. <laughs> there, we did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> We're doing it. So, the pressure's all off, but let's just see anyway. All right. We ask 100 married men, if you woke up a single man tomorrow, what's the first thing you'd buy? Motorcycle, Steve. Good answer. A motorcycle. Ugh, <laughs> 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 oh, not good enough. These answers that you guys are giving are just clearly too good. This was Mina's thought, which you can hear her think as we hear what the answers turned out to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so stupid. <laughs> oh no. Mina is at that moment reading her own mentions from the future. <laughs> oh my God, she so is. She's doing the mental math of how this is going to go for her. And by the way, like, so Gojo, I think, could get this sense from being around us pregame. But like David Chang and Chris Yang, these are business partners, friends. But Chang doesn't trust Chris. That's why, so Dan was asking, like, what's the lineup order? The lineup order was that whatever it is, Chris Yang is last. Because David Chang regards him as a choker. And just so you know that I am not exaggerating any of this, here is Dave Chang on The Dave Chang Show describing Chris Yang's history of choking. Listen, Chris Yang is well known to choke under pressure at ordering in a restaurant, okay? <laughs> He what, orders the most ridiculous things because he's so nervous that the waiter is waiting too long for an answer that I was like, man, this, we won't even need uh, Chris at the end. I'll, 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 I'll have two cop salads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, so that's why I was like, Chris is going to be great. Just don't put him in a high pressure situation. He does not want him to go to the buzzer. In Family Feud rules, the first four people of your team don't, they go to the buzzer, the fifth person does not. Right. Unless... Unless. Unless, Unless you there suck is so bad. <laughs> an unprecedented sudden death sub 300 buzz off <laughs> in which suddenly the fifth start in your rotation has to go up with everything on the line and do this. Well, nobody reached 300 points, so we're going to play sudden death. He has to Give say me that a part. Give me Chris. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> In his never most happened. excited game show host voice, the it's most disappointed never he's ever been. It's, I've seen it in real, but I've never seen it in celebrity. We are asking for the top answer only. Whoever gets this one answer will win the game. Good luck to both of you. Here we go. Name a color used in camouflage. So just to pause this here, um, this is the most insultingly easy mm. category in the history of game shows. Mm -hmm. What is the color associated with camouflage? And there is just one stupid answer. <laughs> it is the opposite of our strategy. We have to buzz first and say the obvious answer. Just say it. Chris Ying, buzz in and say it. Choker. Camouflage. Green. Green. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. 
Chris Yang is Kirk Cousins leading the game-winning drive on Monday Night Football with the Atlanta Falcons. A whole game of relative mediocrity in the passing game for someone not known as a clutch performer. And in the biggest spot, he absolutely lands the play. I have two observations here. Two observations. One is that that got only 82 out of 100 people on green, uh, which is funny (laughs) by itself. But also, the only way that I can interpret what that question was, the way that I heard it is, what color is green? Like, that's yeah. how I heard it. it they were just it's trying, like Celebrity they're, Jeopardy they're, SNL. They're, they're trying to help yes. toddlers win the game that they're bad at. <laughs> Right. What noise they're does like, a doggy make? They're like, the runtime of this show does not accommodate an extra round. So let's make sure we get this one. <laughs> um, we won the game 98 to 285. Okay. <laughs> we lost right. the game by being down 187 points, but because of green, made it to Fast Bunny. <laughs> Fast Money, for those who are not familiar, is the part of the show where your charity, this is for charity, let's also mm, remember yes. that, I guess, that's important. Um, they win all the money if you can crack 200 points. Mm-hmm. That question, by the way, was also charity, to be clear. <laughs> hey, I need two of you. Gojo, explain what you saw. Originally, you guys had selected you and Mina to represent the team up there. Yes. But they wanted to have David up there because it was his team. And so Mina had to go back to the bullpen. This was not seen on no. TV, but this is the behind the no. scenes part of this that they had I to know. decide. No. Yes. 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 No. Dan, there is a take of this where me and Mina are standing on either side of Steve Harvey about to do fast money. I would love to see her face. I want to see that. Pablo, you got to so get intense. that. You got to call the feud yeah, and you got to get you yeah. got to get them to give you the audio that hasn't been released. You have to. It gets better because me and Mina are locked in, obviously. Mm. Um Chang didn't want to do it. Right. That's why Mina and I were there. Yeah. And the stage manager who was like, uh, by the way, guys, please don't give up, was like, uh, by the way, guys, this is Celebrity Family Feud. The captain of the team needs yeah. to do this. Yeah. You coward. I, you guys should have argued back. We're all so famous, okay? Have you ever watched, yeah, afternoon sports television yeah. at a sports bar? with? We're very you? famous to a, a, a very niche group. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> This was the third take, by the way. So at one point, Steve Harvey says, uh, David, good to see you. Because Chang was so discombobulated. Yes. When he wa- you remember this, Gojo? He walks out and he keeps on walking what? off stage. What? He doesn't stop. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the opposite of when Michael Vick scored that touchdown against the Vikings where he runs out the tunnel, except it's before anything is actually <laughs> scored. Why? Because he didn't know what was happening. And doesn't want to do and it. So, like, clearly and, doesn't. And he's he's afraid. Being, he's being and badgered is into oh doing something, God, bullied into so a stage manager. Look, I don't want to uh, talk about why it is that meekness is not acceptable in these circumstances, but walking off of the stage three times because you're afraid of a stage manager does not deserve to be a captain of one of these teams. Oh, no. So um, after the successful take three, um, I get sent backstage, so I go second. So immediately we're like, I should probably go last. Um, and you know, so he's so there's not so much pressure on him. He doesn't pass out like trying, a goat. Trying to trying to help Chang, they send me backstage and I have big headphones on. Yeah, because they ask the same five questions. Exactly. And you have to give the and you cannot give the same answer as each other. And so I have never, of course, I've never seen the backstage of Family Feud. It is it is uh, a, a, an even more intimidating place. Headphones go on, big headphones like these, and on loop in my headphones is the song "Hey Jealousy." Huh. Gin blossoms. So there was a security guard standing in front of me looking. And in front of him was the monitor in which you could see everything. Huh. And so he had that monitor at like a one degree angle past what I could see. Okay. Almost daring me to try and like break out and like peek around the corner. Yeah. Uh, instead, I'm just like locking eyes with this man. As I would he, just close my eyes. As he is watching this, as Hey Jealousy in like a clockwork orange, like just <laughs> military style torture experiment is playing over and over again, which means that I could not experience what Gojo got to see in the audience, which was this. And now it's time to play. All right, you ready? Let's go. 20 seconds on the clock, please. We asked 100 men, you're naked in the woods. Someone walks by. 
What do you cover yourself with? Uh, branches. On a scale of one to ten, how nice are your neighbors? Two. Name the greatest breakfast food ever created. <laughs> Burrito. Name someone you should never call when you're drunk. Uh, police. Name a coin you throw into a fountain to make a wish. Quarter. All right, let's go. We asked 100 men. You're naked in the woods. Someone walks by. What do you cover yourself with? You said... Some branches. Survey said... Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, yes. how nice are your neighbors? You said... Two. Survey said... Name the greatest breakfast food ever created. You said the burrito. <laughs> Survey said. He's right. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. Yeah. Name someone you should never call when you're drunk. You said. <laughs> oh, yeah, the police. Hello, it's me. <laughs> Survey said. Uh, it's so funny. Hello. Name a coin you throw into a fountain to make a wish. You said quarter. Survey said. Just hello, it's me. <laughs> it's so funny. It's being it's roasted a good answer, by though. Steve. Don't call the cops and oh say God. you're hammered. I, um, I thought it was a better answer than eight. Gojo, what was the mood in the room? extremely down like it had been the entire time. Like, this was the extension of exactly what you guys had put on tape so far this performance. And so it, now you were coming up into arguably the most high-pressure environment in game shows where you are the last lifeline for this team. And I am so fascinated to get a peek under the hood, Pablo, because like Katie, we all sit at home and play this and yell it out, but it's impossible to replicate the circumstances that you walked into here. And I love you, but you were wearing the nerves coming out. Like, I could see it on you as you walked out and put those headphones off. I walked out, okay? Headphones off. Hey, jealousy is over. I walk out. I immediately notice a, a almost like depressive Mina Kimes. Yeah, she was stone faced. <laughs> and and the mood in the room um, is a mixture of things um, that is confusing to me and only making me more and more <laughs> like a dog. terrified. They just put you in a, like a puppy they put in a room, and he's like, "What?" Right. There's a lot of sensory overload. I I may have started peeing down my leg. <laughs> Oh, no. Well, Pablo. Yeah, Steve. It's going to take a massive effort. <laughs> okay. Uh, he didn't big do laugh bad. from the okay. crowd. Okay. He got 54. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. That's confident. That was cute. That was cute and confident, Pablo. I loved that. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. You got all the number ones left. Yeah. On regular Family Feud, That's nice. I've seen people make this comeback. <laughs> This will be the first on Celebrity. <laughs> Pablo, you can do what's never been done before. Woo! You can make history as the highest second contestant ever in the history of Celebrity Family Feud. Come on. It's gonna be a little bit tougher. We're gonna give you 25 <laughs> seconds. How high were you, actually? I was, I was residually stoned. <laughs> when he said it was that, in my bloodstream. He was clearly like meant to say something else, but the way he said that in your face just went. <laughs> it, it, it was one of those things where I'm like, does he know? Does Steve Harvey know? Does he know? What's that I'm up? Pretty high right now. Does Steve Harvey uh, expect me to not look into the camera and break the fourth wall and acknowledge what was just said? You seemed not. That nervous to me there. So we're very like, okay, that's doable. The little point. That. Confidence. Honestly, when Steve said that, it kind of broke me out of a spell a bit. Huh. And I was like, oh, okay, wait a minute. As the drug's wearing off. <laughs> Opportunity <laughs> has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> I also will true. say, I did, um, from there, uh, mostly blackout. You ready? I'm ready, Steve. All right, let's remind everybody of David's answers. 25 seconds on the clock, please. Let's go, man. All right. We asked 100 you men, you're naked right. in the woods. Someone walks by. What do you cover yourself with? A leaf. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how nice are your neighbors? Four. Name the greatest breakfast food ever created. Bacon. Name someone you should never nice. call when you're drunk. Your mom. Name a coin you throw into a fountain to make a wish. A penny. We got a shot. 
so fast. So fast. You were, that was Will Ferrell in old school. Yes. I truly yes. like lost consciousness. Pure instinct. Look at you. <laughs> we asked 100 men. You're naked in the woods. Someone I wish you could see Dodo in the audience. What do you cover yourself with? You said a leaf. Survey said. Yeah! Right there, we knew we had a shot. 50 out the gate. Yeah. It's a big leaf. Leaf. It's a big it's leaf, he says. And good specification. It's a big leaf. Number one answer, 23, Name is very someone long. you should never call when you're drunk. You said, don't ever call your mom. Survey said. <laughs> 37, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. The number one answer come on, Paul. was your ex. Thank you, John Legend. <laughs> I love we that. need 37 I love that so much. Part. Name a coin <laughs> Thank you, you throw John into a fountain to make a wish. <laughs> you said the penny. Uh, yes. Man of the people. So Survey good. said. Oh my God. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's still exciting. It's still electric. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Pablo's little, like, what was that? No, that it was, was a sea walk. It was a sea walk. No, but that before was a that, that palms, was a pre -Kendrick palms Lamar out. He was Russell Crowe in Gladiator. Are you not entertained? <laughs> that is the most confident Pablo has ever been. Come to me, Steve Harvey and the feud and the adoring masses out there. I am the greatest thing you have ever seen. Who who was it that compared you to Peter Weber? Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did not remember reacting like that, obviously. Wow. Yeah. Um, when I watched it back, I was like, it kind of looks like I'm waiting for Steve Harvey to catch me. Like I wanted to, you know, jump into his arms. He did not. He turned away. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but what was cut down, Gojo, you were there. In my mind, we celebrated for like 30 minutes. Weren't you on the ground for a little while? <laughs> so I collapsed onto the ground and started doing like yes. the Homer Simpson spinning around what? on his back thing. Why? <laughs> because I was just feeling all of the feelings I had never allowed myself to feel before. Crazy feeling to feel on a television set. My feeling was, I think this is what Tom Brady must feel like. And that's what he's always doing, spinning around on his back. <laughs> Above me, I looked up. This is not a joke. It was cut from the episode. I looked up almost as if on an operating table post-surgery. And there was Chrissy Teigen, oh. like with fake defibrillators on my chest, <laughs> like getting into the routine of me, like being on the floor, like comatose. Um, all of that got cut. Wow. I wonder why. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't, uh, <laughs> can wasn't we get budgeted it? in the can time allotted. Can we get allotted. it, though? Can we get, can we ask the feud people to get that for us? Like, we need the Mina footage, and that's then right. we also need the you spinning on the ground like a potato bug. The uh, PTFO investigation is, is forthcoming. Yes, please find out. After the question about being nude in the woods, you said a leaf, and then you went to a big leaf. Uh, you wanted to point that out, and you had another Correct. joke in the holster that Steve Harvey started to talk over. Where were you going with the big leaf, the, the, the banana leaf? Mm. Where were you headed? I think I, think I was going towards um, banana leaf. But I was gonna like you know make it even more obviously mm. a penis. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that I think we got it. I think. When you said leaf, I think everybody went. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and so it's a good thing that you clarified. It was the number one answer. The to biggest be fair. a banana leaf is enormous, by the way. For yeah. the, we're gonna put up a photo of a banana definitely leaf. Definitely do on that. The show. Definitely do that. I mean, it's just one of the biggest leaves. <laughs> sure. Yeah, definitely Google Pablo's banana leaf. <laughs> yeah, I was like billions of billions of Asian people want me to yell banana leaf just to clarify. <laughs> Was I my... See, I would have said a bush and that would have gotten me in my own type of trouble, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> you did it, Pablo. Yes, yes. You did it. Yes. I didn't realize when I showed up that day that I would become the highest second contestant in the history of Celebrity <laughs> Family Feud. But that's what, that's what it was like. Um, it made me think of great 
game show contestants like Katie Nolan, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Her trilogy we chronicled yes, of course. on PTFO Thank you. at Here length in this Here way. Here we go. Here we go. And also, and also <laughs> Mike Golick Jr. And also uh, Dan Levitar. Have you seen this? Oh. Have you yes, seen this, Kojo? I have, and I love this. No. We have with us here on our very stage here in Orlando, the Hurricanes of Miami of Florida. <laughs> Auto racing now for both Amazing. schools. Amazing. In 1904, driving one of his own cars, this American drove one mile in under 40 seconds. That was an average speed of 91 <laughs> miles an hour. Name that American auto manufacturer. Miami, Dan. Ford. Henry Ford, that is correct. Let's uh, meet the players. <laughs> I'm Dan Lebetard. I'm a 19-year-old sophomore majoring in news editorial journalism 19. and politics. I'm from Miramar, Florida. <laughs> All right, Hurricanes, we're glad to have you. In the 1972 Summer Olympic Games took place in what city? Oklahoma camp. Munich. <laughs> Munich is right. Which Boston Red Sox pitcher threw the most shutouts in 1987? <laughs> Miami time. Roger. Here comes <laughs> Roger. Oklahoma. All right. Roger, Oklahoma. <laughs> All right. And that, uh, that wraps up our 100 second round. And Oklahoma is the champion. Does over Dan's two handed buzzer technique. I was just going to say, you can learn so much about someone in this game based on how they caressed the buzzer. And Dan just fully, what made you switch from fully enveloping it in your closed hands to then offering that little sliver of it later I on? I was leaking confidence throughout that. The part, <laughs> the part that Pablo has not revealed is that uh, a couple of haunting things here. First, Cam from Oklahoma is someone who still haunts me 35 years later because he kicked our ass. But the answer that you saw that I got correctly, uh, Ford, was my only correct answer the entire time and the entire experience was so embarrassing that 30 years later my my brother would leave answering machine messages that oh, would no. simply say ford and he'd hang oh, up my because God. because oh, it was the God. only thing i got right the entire time i was on there was the single word ford 19 is crazy i would have said 23 19 what when was this you're a fully grown where man where was this I'm going to go ahead and guess that this was 1987, 87. The late 1900s. 87, oh, God, yes. Uh, this was uh, in Orlando. It was boardwalk and baseball somewhere near Disney World. And I will say that that uh, leisure suit was the only suit that I owned. Uh, <laughs> and it, too, was about 19 years old. I loved how Mina Kimes you were in not being able to hide your exasperation yes. as you miss on the buzzer and just give this brief flash of anger before quelling all these feelings again. I was too slow. That's what kept happening to me. It's why I tell you I'm, I'm not joking when I say it was legitimately thrilling to have you guys conquer those game shows. Uh, uh, Katie, the brain game show, and uh, Pablo with like kind just of. an amazing uh, comeback. The the relatability game show. Mm -hmm. Me, mm. me. Yeah. This is like, many, feels like the make a wish saying, thing you said yes. to me when, you, when I did Jeopardy. <laughs> Pablo said, I can't shake the feeling this feels like a make a wish type of situation. And I was like, thanks, it was meant buddy. As a compliment. Thanks, what, buddy. What, what is uh, the main uh, color in camouflage? <laughs> isn't that? <laughs> Pablo went all the way from being dissed for going to Harvard <laughs> yeah. to answering with the penny. <laughs> yes. I went all the way from being dissed. To putting it on you. Oh, God. I wish I didn't make eye contact with you when you did that. He said dis. He said dis. No. With, with a D. No. Stop saying more things. This has been Pablo Torre Finds Out, a Meadowlark Media production. And I'll talk to you next time.